So I get a lot of questions about ACL recovery and why we don't use STEM in order to refacilitate quad contract contraction post ACL. So yeah, post ACL patient never used STEM with her, and here's why I'll show her on the uninvolved leg. So if we take her up and I test rectus fem and she fades and gives out and has pain. And if I test vastus intermedius and it fades and she has pain, genuine articularis fades and it has pain, lateralis, medialis, they all are painful and weak. They're not weak, they're inhibited. So if I test this and it fails, rectus fem is the primary one. So if I can get rectus fem to turn on right now, I don't have to waste time using yeast stem to facilitate a contraction. So then I come back and test, boom, she stops me, and guess what? No pain. Do this one, still fades. So if we treat that, so notice how long it takes me to facilitate the contraction. Not very long at all. In the time that it takes you to walk across the room, get the stim machine, hook up the stim machine, hold it, she stops. I've already got quads turned on. Now we can go do more important things like strengthening. Side note, how do you get more flexion? So if they are having problems getting flexion and you're sitting there just driving them crazy and causing pain because you're trying to get passive range of motion flexion, think about this. What is going to give them more flexion through the law of reciprocal inhibition? Hamstring control. So a lot of PTs forget just because they're an ACL patient, they're post-op, doesn't mean they only have ACL defi or, uh, quad deficiencies. They also have hamstring deficiencies. So if we check hams and they fail, and they fail, so semitendinosus, membranosus, bicep, fem, long, and short head, all fail. When I flip her over, refacilitate, takes about 20 seconds, come back over. Now when hamstrings kick in, so now she's got normal facilitation of the hamstrings, which gives her normal reciprocal inhibition of the quads. So when we go into knee flexion, she goes back 10, 15, 20 degrees further without screwing around and driving her crazy, trying to get passive range of motion for the sake of passive range of motion. If you get range of motion through physiology by normalizing neuromuscular contractions, passive range of motion comes back really easy, strength comes back at the same, same time, so we get motion, strength, and stability, motion stability all at the same time. You don't have to force them into passive range of motion, which by the way, when they stand up, just equals more weakness and more of a mess. So we're gonna facilitate things, and then we're gonna get on to better things like exercise, and we're gonna hit BFR with her right now for the first time. So think about that next time you've got a post-op knee, post-op ACL. Stop wasting your time on STEM.